In this grade 12 mathematical literacy video, we are looking at the study strategy for term 3. In term 3, not only are you finishing the syllabus, but that's where you start your revision for your preparatory as well as your final examinations, which are both based on the full syllabus and the scope of metrics. So that's what we are going to make sure that we cover or we take into account as we plan for term 3. Now, before we get into that i just want to remind you that we have cheat sheets for both paper one and paper two of mathematical literacy all you have to do is simply email me for details additionally in preparation for your preparatory examinations that are coming up we are going to again be hosting virtual classes a day before each paper that you will be writing to help you with your last minute preparations again for those details you simply have to shoot me an email Before you can start with your revision for your preparatory examinations, the first thing that you have to do, and that is a must, is to make sure that you have indeed completed the syllabus for your metric year. Your metric year syllabus ends with the topic of maps and plans. Now, I want you to pay careful attention when it comes to this topic that even though it's the last one, I know that there could be a confusion that in term two, you would have covered maps and plans, but you have to also look look at what is in the context of those maps and plans that you covered in term two and what are you going to be covering in term three or what you should have covered in term three because most of you if you are proactive enough i'm hoping that you have um, made sure that you have studied at least the maps and plans or you have started with it already if not finished so in term two with maps and plans what you covered was the maps portion of the topic meaning that you did the maps you did the scales and you learned how to work with actual versus reality in terms of scales you also learned how to do map work in terms of giving directions and dealing with a compass and calculating the distances between uh, different places right in term three the maps and plans side or portion of this topic that you are focusing on is first of all assembly instructions now assembly instructions are a topic that falls under maps and plans so i want you to make sure that as you are saying you have covered the topic of maps and plans you have covered indeed everything that falls under it starting with assembly instructions with assembly instructions what you need to make sure that you understand how to do is first of all the language that we use when we're giving instructions because usually you are given the names of the tools that will be used to construct or, or to assemble a piece of furniture so the way you answer that question you can't just say take piece one and put it together with piece two you need to be able to get in the practice of using the names that will be provided in the materials list to describe what you are doing in each and every single step so it's a very easy question however it gets tricky in the language that you use if you don't use the correct language because it is an easy uh, question we have to look at the accuracy of how you use the, the the language in terms of describing each and every step in the assembly instruction right are you using the correct terminology where do you get that terminology in most cases it will be given to you in the materials list then we look at elevation plans so usually this portion of maps and plans focuses more so on the plan side of things so you will be dealing a lot with house plans uh, so with house plans you will have things like elevation plans do you know what elevation plans are can you describe that terminology hence we are also including into this list things like terminology you need to be able to tell us what is the south elevation what is the north elevation be able to describe or define those terms even so what do we mean by a uh, viewpoint or an elevation plan what are those terminologies mean so make sure that you go study those terminologies as well they are a simple two mark question in your question paper 
but you know that it can go a long way quite frankly in my opinion i think it is irresponsible for you to let go of easy marks because sometimes in the question paper there are things that are outside your control in terms of maybe you did not understand the wording in the question paper or you made a mistake and that that you did not see so things like that you may not have full control over but things like learning terminology those are the things that you have control over i'm saying this because i know that a lot of students tend to take things like terminology for granted when they can in fact be those marks that will save you and get you to your pass mark or even to your distinction right the last thing that we do in maps and plans which i think also is one that carries the highest marks will be packaging so solving packaging problems these are the questions that are going to be the ones that carry the most amount of marks and that will require a lot of steps so make sure that you actually practice a packaging question you know how to uh, deal with packaging and the steps that are required as well as what the examiner is looking for in terms of what their marks off if you are practicing with a memorandum for example pay attention to which steps are being marked as well as that statement at the end that's important to conclude with once you're done with that last portion of maps and plans as the last topic in your syllabus then it becomes time for you to get started with your revision now when you do your revision it is important that you do simultaneously your paper one and your paper two because as you know with maths papers math literacy and even mathematics you write your paper one on a friday and you write your paper two on a monday and in case you thought maybe it was a glitch in the past two 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 terms no it was not it is how it is you're going to have this in your upcoming prelims as well as in your final examination paper one will be on a friday and paper two will be on a monday right the exact following monday so i'm saying this to try to emphasize that you cannot just take your time your entire time and spend it just practicing paper one hoping that you will start with paper two once you're done writing paper one because that will then mean that what you're saying is you will take weeks and weeks just studying and preparing for paper one and you will only revise for paper two in the two days of the weekend for obvious reasons that is not a good plan it's not even sustainable not only because paper two is one of the most challenging papers between the two of them but to try and do any three topics or prepare for any paper regardless of what subject it would be in just one weekend is just not doable so what i would recommend you do is you alternate between the topics of your two papers now you would have been just fresh from just studying maps and plans which are uh, is in relation to paper two so my recommendation is as you're going through that maps and plans topic you make sure that you put your all into it because more than likely in the upcoming preliminary examinations the topics of maps and plans that will be tested will be the ones that you just studied in term theory so those packaging those assembly as well as elevation plans that's what will appear in the portion of maps and plans so make sure that when you study that you actually study it with the mind that you are somewhat making a revision for your upcoming prelims so then you can then say you have touched a topic of paper two so when you start a revision you can go then to a paper one topic like finance try to remind yourself of what could be coming up in finance look at the past two question papers for march and june look at under finance what was tested and then focus your attention mostly on what has not been tested before then alternate back to measurements and do the same thing come back to data handling do the same thing probability applies to both so do your best to cover it just once I have youtube recommend you more of my videos be sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below